Okay, this is a continuation of the previous video on naming um, chemical compounds using the crisscross method. So I'll get into it um, a bit more in this video. Um, but before that, I'm just going to start off with the periodic table. So let's talk about the valency of groups on the periodic table. Okay, so the periodic table. Um, is arranged uniquely in a way where um, chemicals in the same group, so the same column, have similar properties, okay? So group one, that's the uh, alkali metals. Alkali metals, so they, that includes things, um, elements like sodium, potassium, etc. They've got a valency of one. Okay, that means that they like to give away one electron. Okay, and including hydrogen up here, even though hydrogen is not a metal, by convention it's just put up here as well with a valency of one. So hydrogen's only got one electron, so it just wants to get rid of it. Group number two, that's the alkaline earth metals. Alkaline earth metals, and they've got a valency of two. Okay, so probably see where I'm going with this in terms of the pattern. Valency of two, they like, they like to give away two electrons. And then you've got this massive chunk, which is most of the periodic table. These are the transition metals. Okay, that includes things like iron, gold, silver, copper. And they have a valency of, they also have a valency of two. But um, they have some, you know, unique properties due to the way um, their shells are organized. Okay, so sometimes they can have a valency of three. It really depends on things like orbital, what we call orbital subshells in uh, atomic physics. Okay, that's the transition metals. Then you've got group three here. Group three, okay, and that's got a valency of three. Group four, surprise, surprise, valency of four. Group five, valency of five and so on and so forth. Group six, valency of six. Group seven, valency of seven. Group eight, these are the noble gases. Okay, they, they're actually inert. That means that they're very stable. They don't like to give away or gain electrons because they're already happy. Um, group seven, they're the halogens. Halogens, that's things like chlorine, bromine, etc. Apologies, my mistake. My mistake. Let's get rid of this here. For non-metals, it's a different story. So for metals, valency is, um, it's got a plus, right? So group three has a charge of, so va the valency in this case is, is three. Uh, group four, valency is plus four. Group five, this is very good, interesting here. Valency, so the, these are elements like nitrogen, phosphorus, the valency for group five is minus three. Okay, group six, that includes oxygen. Valency is, oops. Valency is minus two. Okay, oxygen, sulfide, they've got um, a valency of minus two. They like to gain two electrons. Um, the halogens have, so fluor fluorine, uh, chlorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, etc. Valency of minus one, okay. And the halogens, the, sorry, the noble gases, valency is zero. Okay, so that's the valency of the groups on the periodic table. Okay, positive for metals and negative for non-metals. Okay, so it goes one, two over here, three plus four, then group five um, becomes minus. So minus three, then minus two, then minus one, and then it goes to zero. For group eight okay so let's now actually get into the nitty-gritty of writing an ion compound in terms of the crisscross method so the first step in the crisscross method so let's suppose i'm given calcium and chlorine and i want to make an ionic compound how do i do that well um, step number one is to write the symbol of the first ion in the compound's name then the second one okay by convention it's typically the metal first Okay, so write symbol of first ion in compound's name. Okay, typically metal first. 
followed by second iron. What do I mean by that? Well, calcium is Ca on the periodic table. And chlorine is Cl on the periodic table. Okay, But calcium is in group 2. It's an alkaline earth metal. So it's got a valency of Ca plus 2. Chlorine is in group 7. It's a halogen. It's got a valency of minus 1. So we write this, minus 1. Okay, That's the, that's the first step. Okay, uh, sorry, first and second steps. The, uh, the second step is um, indicating the number number of ions. Okay, so I've done that here. So there's two ions in the compound, and I've used superscripts. Okay, it's indicate valencies. Okay, calcium and chlorine. CA2 plus CO minus. So I'm going to go from the name to the chemical formula, okay, using this approach. So how do we now go from here to calcium chloride, um, calcium chloride I should say, the actual ionic compound? Well, this is uh, done by balancing the charges of the ions, okay? So I've got two calcium ions, I've got one chlorine ion. Now for an ionic compound to form, it has to be neutral overall. So I actually need two two calciums, sorry, I actually need two chlorines, okay, because minus one minus one is minus two, minus two plus two, they balance out, so you can write it like this, that's the compound, calcium chloride, and the way you name it is by writing down the metal first, which is calcium, chlorine becomes chloride, at an odd at the end by convention, Okay, another way to th think of it is, um, so Ca2 plus Cl minus, the crisscross method means, so you write CaCl, you bring down the two, cross it over, okay, to the bottom. If there's nothing in front of the minus, or let's say that's a plus here, then you don't bring it down, okay? So you write like that. Let's do another example. Uh, but before that, just a note, polyatomic ions. So a, a polyatomic ions, poly means many. Okay, it's an, um, it's an ion which consists of many different atoms, okay? For example, let's say this. This is known as the nitrate ion, okay? Polyatomic because it's got nitrogen and oxygen. So two or more ions, that's called a polyatomic ion, right? Um... We'll do an example using a polyatomic ion. So let's suppose we've got magnesium and we've got the nitrate ion. Okay, what what's the ionic compound formed in this case? So magnesium is in group two. It's an alkaline earth metal, just like calcium. So it's got a charge of plus two, or two plus in this case. Plus two, it doesn't really matter how you write it. Nitrate is just this, you know, three minus. So you basically need two lots of nitrates to balance the two, right? Because minus two plus two cancels out. So you get this, and make sure for polyatomic ions, put a bracket around it, right? Let's keep track of things. And so you need two of them, so you put a subscript there too. Right, the crisscross method, so that's one approach. The next, the other approach is the crisscross method. Three minus. So you write this, making sure to put brackets around the or parentheses around the nitrate ion, and the two comes down. There's nothing in front of the minus, so you don't bring it down. Okay, there you go. And we'll do another one. Let's do barium and sulfur sulfide. Right. What's the compound formed? Okay, barium, it's got a, um, a valency of plus two. It's in group two. And sulfur is a non-metal. So it's got a valency. So it's found in group six. Along with oxygen. So how do we do this? Well, once again, well, just looking at this, it's already... So there's two 
the charge of the barium ion is plus two. The charge of the sulf, um, sulfide ion is uh, minus two. So it's just basically that barium sulfide. Okay, odd at the end. I should mention here as well. This is magnesium nitride. Okay. There's no need to write subscripts in this case because the charges bounce, cancel out. 